Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. It is season three thoughts. I am going to start with the finale since it's still fresh in my mind. I think that it's it's one of the finales that relies more on information and you might say where it leaves us what we might learn in the following season. It isn't as big as action heavy as some of the earlier ones as as the first two and there aren't as big real standouts the the blowing up of the rotunda is great and it is a pretty good fight at the end there but and and it focuses on the tension of Vaughn yeah you know will he actually kill Lauren but yeah the the second season has Irina jumping off of, you know the 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 top of a skyscraper and you know going yeah pulling the the die hard move there and the the fight between Sid and Allison and yeah this one it's the you know we see a little bit of information in the in what Sid finds in the you know they're, they're at the end in, in Wittenberg I think it is you know we see the bit about Project Christmas and that you know I'm, I'm not gonna if I remembered what else we we learned from that I wouldn't be give, I wouldn't give it away but yeah it would appear like you know if we combine that bit from the the document with what Lauren said maybe her you know said losing two years was actually that she was activated you know being a sleeper and the we we where we leave Sloan and Nadia is that they are going to go find Rambaldi, as Suit and Glasses put it. And it's, you know, there's a little bit more of a, you know, she trusts him a little more now because he wasn't, well, you know, thanks for not killing me, Dad. And I guess that's enough for her to, you know, now she you know she doesn't regret not cleaning up that that was i i like what they communicated with that you know exchange or her monologue really about when you know as a kid when they were finding families but it was a little awkwardly phrased maybe with the if i knew it was you were my father i would have cleaned up those anyway yeah you know we we and she said that she you know when when the serum was wearing off she would she would put in the wrong you know numbers or whatever you know for the coordinates i guess she remembers everything that she changed you know both when both what she changed and what she changed it from because otherwise you know they would still have a lot of trouble getting the the real coordinates if not but yeah I, I guess that is the the idea and you know Sid near the end tries to snipe Lauren but she dixoned it and yeah accidentally got the 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 guy instead and you know with with the coordinates being the wrong ones that really 
you know, explains why they were having such trouble, why the Covenant was having such trouble finding the, you know, digging deep enough or whatever. And I guess we are to take it that the Covenant is now essentially gone. I mean, the 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 department heads, the, the leaders of at least they've lost a lot of power. It it seems like it would be stronger if we knew exactly kind of what the I I don't know, I just feel like the second season, for example, was stronger, you know. Sloan got the information and he runs off. Irina hints at you know something and then escapes and such but but yeah the we have that yeah with with Sark in prison again like he was at the start of the season and Lauren dead the what was it the North American cell of the Covenant is essentially you know yeah, it, it completely lacks leadership at this point, so it would make sense that that's essentially, you know, yeah, no no longer has power. We, we know that, you know, Cole is still there, and he was slightly above them in the, you know, yeah, the, the hierarchy. I do think that it's a good idea that it doesn't the the climactic fight between Lauren and Sid doesn't try to be bigger than the season two fight. Instead, focusing on Lauren taunting and baiting Sid during their fight, and at the end we do have Vaughn in a very similar situation. You know, he he is where Jack was decades ago, with the the distinct difference that Lauren is actually dead. Whereas, well, we don't you know as of the the finale here, we don't know. There's that hint of you know if if your mother is still alive, why haven't you excuse me, why haven't you heard from her or talked to her or something like that? You know, so maybe she is actually dead, and maybe Jack's you know, him talking to, to Vaughn about it, maybe that's not just him trying to, you know, live out the revenge fantasy through Vaughn, maybe he actually did use some of that on Arena, you know, it, yeah, cer certainly Lauren seems to hint at that. Now, Lauren herself was hated by the fans because they wanted Sid and Vaughn to remain together. Personally, I don't really think the, the romance is that interesting of an aspect. I, you know, I get it. It's, it's basically there for the people who want to see the two of them get together. You know, it has been right from the, the start of the series, and, you know, it, I, I do think, you know, love triangles are difficult to do right, but I do think that this one has some really interesting elements to it, you know, such as the, the you know, if you love her, drop the gun, you know, and Lauren and the show, you know, does a callback to that in the finale, and yeah, it, it's a good, and, and in general, that first time where it is Sid and Vaughn versus, without them knowing it, versus Sark and Lauren, and yeah, just this, you know, this kind of pairing of Sark with Lauren, Lauren with Vaughn, and yeah, it's it's quite it's it's interesting. I I like what they did there, and they yeah they they did some really cool things with that entire 
dynamic. And yeah, I, I don't I don't care that much if we see the you know Sid and Vaughn getting together. I will say, like I said in the season two thoughts, I thought there was some I, I like the dynamic shown when the two were working together, her smiling, you know, hugely, and the, you know, hi, honey, the, you know, in the, in the club, and the, yeah, you know, it's, there are some, I, I like that we, that we got to, that we got to see that, but I don't think we necessarily need to keep seeing that, which doesn't, you know, they might do some interesting things with the two of them, you know, now that Lauren is out of the picture, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll see in the upcoming, upcoming seasons. But yeah, I, I, I quite like that Lauren was brought into it. It, it makes things interesting again. It, you know, that's that's always, you know, when the two people that everybody expects to get together actually do get together, the show is kind of over from, where where do you go from that? And, yeah, I, I think it's interesting to, yeah, m mix that up. And, yeah, she is the NSC liaison, and she... She becomes it because Sid makes it quite clear that she's not a fan of Lindsay, I think his name was. And he goes really, you know, yeah, he goes really far in his hatred of her and his willingness to completely just use her for the ends. Now... I, I quite like that Lauren isn't a Mary Sue. It isn't just this thing of you have to... It, it would be so easy to just make it Sid wants to get back with him and, and Lauren is just there as the obstacle. But, you know, from very early on, she is clearly a character. She isn't just there to be... Yeah. An, an obstacle between the two. And we, you know, it becomes clear Lauren was always working for the Covenant, thus always working towards Rambaldi. Sark also was, but he didn't, he maybe didn't know that it was the Covenant. He, you know, he figured out pretty quickly that it was Rambaldi, but at first he was just following you know the the you know they they kidnap him in what is supposed to look like you know this exchange kind of thing and then he starts working for a new master you know he's he's good at that taking orders he's he's a good right hand man i was kind of confused when sloan said you know we already made that mistake what did he have against working with Sark. They it it went well. I can understand if he was like, I don't want to work again with Irina because she actually betrayed him at the end of the second season. But I don't know what Sark did to you know. I mean, I mean, he got himself captured, of course. But actually, I'm gonna try to. Season two ends with Sark captured. Season three ends with Sark captured. I don't think season one did. No, no. Sark was working for the man, Irina. But he wasn't captured at the end there. He was still active early in the second season. But, yeah. And we have a lot of these really awkward kind of, you know, if Sark is there when the CIA do a raid on, like, like the, the church kind of location with the, you know, do your thing and she torches the thing. And somewhere, you know... can't believe I can't remember his name, but yeah, some, somewhere a big bulky guy, you know, wonders, it must be a chick thing and what a waste of ammo. 
but yeah, you know, they're all shooting at each other, and somehow Sark doesn't take a single hit. And, you know, the, the most awkward one is, of course, when they actually... When Sark and Lauren, you know, said, you know, this is only enough for one dose. So, you know, if you want more of the, you know, of this fluid, you're going to have to work with us. And then they're there, and so is Sloan, and so is Nadia. And then the CIA come in for Nadia, and somehow, you know, Sark, Lauren, and Sloan all escape unharmed and you know not at all captured i i do quite like that lauren you know busted out a freaking law to or or is it just pronounced or is or do you say law I've, I've only ever seen it i've never actually heard it said but yeah that yeah she she came prepared and the now this is the first season where, and I'm not going to give away for future seasons, but in this season, for the first time, there is no, you know, we don't see Sid's home life, there is no school, that she, you know, she graduated near the end of the second season, and, you know, really, there is no major character in this season who has a personal relationship with someone who doesn't know that they're a spy. There's just the thing of Lauren being a double agent, which, you know, almost no one is aware of. But, yeah, and I I think they did a good job of, of making it interesting. Like I said in the, the season two thoughts, I'm not sure they did that much interesting with the, it was kind of just this, this high concept kind of thing. You know, she has, you know, at, she, she has, you know, she has to study and given, you know, papers and such while also going on these, you know, black ops kind of missions and being a double agent and this the whole, thing, you know, and it just, it didn't lead to that much interesting conflict, I don't think. And in this season, with them gone, we, yeah, we can focus more specifically on the characters and the, you know, get get really deep. It, you know, so it goes darker, deeper, with more, more like a psychological thriller, more personal with, with Sid. It reminds me kind of phase two of the MCU, you know, phase one was just fun and origin kind of stuff, and then phase two, really dark and really big kind of, you know, we have the, the trauma of her having lost two years of her life, and there's some more complex dynamics going on with Sid and Vaughn and Lauren, and the, you know, they they have to figure out what happened in the two years without the NSC knowing about it. And yeah, there's it feels like there's more risk. The good guys fail more often, they get you know, they get hurt more. You know, let's see, how many times did Vaughn at least twice in this season, Vaughn ended up in a hospital bed really badly injured and you know the the second time you in, in the finale he somehow he, he fast travels that's basically it you know they they straight up video game through that yeah somehow he made it there i i do quite like his escape that that was a really good finale kind of situation you know the the thing no no she's walking into a trap it was gotcha you know and then of course, Weiss helps him, and the the thing you know they're trapped in the elevator. Vaughn uses his voice to, or yeah, you know he he uses the the walkie the walkie talkie to, you know, send them in the wrong direction, and yeah, just that was some pretty good stuff. Now, at the end of the day. The, the two missing years are maybe too easily resolved and, you know, they only really get 
the one episode because they were made to cut it down and yeah that that really is too bad and my ex fiance who I'm watching these with pointed out that you know it might not quite jive with what Jack you know found out in his investigation of the the two years of trying to find out where she was and the I, I do think there was quite good episode and I think it did a really good job of communicating a lot to the audience without it fe feeling just like too much you know there, there wasn't yeah it, it didn't it didn't bog down and get bogged down and there was a really satisfying conclusion to it with the you know but but yeah you know when when you first see the scar it's like it, did she you know did did they like take one of her kidneys is that you know the this are we in the urban legend kind of territory or what and yeah it's it's quite good and and you, know, you gotta love Dixon that Kendall wants all this brought back for you know testing do your thing you know it's like we know what you know what we're supposed to, and and Dixon at this he's saying that as head of the CIA you know he's yeah we're we're going we're breaking the rules here because this is just yeah you know c catharsis you need this now the it was pointed out in one of the commentary tracks that the second half is kind of Vaughn's story and yeah really it does the really the whole season is very much about the love triangle the the relationship between you know I I don't know if technically Sark is also part I don't know if love square I, I don't know now I I do really like about this that everything that happens is very directly tied to the covenant it's not always you know in the the Ricky Gervais episode you know it's not them doing it it's them being attacked by him but they're still very directly involved and the covenant is always about Rambaldi you know in the first two seasons there are times where at least I'm pretty sure I remember there being times where yeah where it wasn't about Rambaldi and the really big thing that especially the difference is the first two seasons had a ton of different organizations and it was really hard to keep track of all the different ones and who was part of which and who had done what and was doing you know and why were they doing it and, and all this stuff and yeah here it's it's one long story from the yeah from from the season opener to the season finale it's always about the covenant the covenant is always about Rambaldi yeah it's it's very clear what is being you know yeah what what is happening and as such we can also focus more on the the depth of the characters and their relationships and Dixon is now the CIA director so we get a lot less Kendall which you know Dixon deserves it and we did get a, a nice hefty amount of Kendall in season two now the season opener has Jack with the very unfortunate Unabomber look and of, it does of course have the you know Sid going on an unsanctioned mission and bringing back an item to prove herself loyal and useful you know in a very deliberate mirroring of the the pilot and later on Lauren does the same thing with the Covenant and 
Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I like the parallels between Lauren and Sid in this. And, you know, Sloan is supposedly reformed. You know, he's a CIA consultant. He's helped feed millions. And somewhat similar to Arena in season two, he'll get personal, but he'll also help out. You know, the. And it. I think it does manage to avoid being a retread. It's. You know, the, the relationship between Sloan and the other characters is very different from the relationship between Irina and Jack and the, you know, growing healing relationship between Irina and Sid. And, yeah, it's where Irina was very clearly a... She was, she was an enemy, you know, she, she did a walk-in, but at the end of the day, you know, we, this, this isn't like some kind of, yeah, she's very clearly an enemy, and she was, you know, she chose to do a walk-in, but she was still in prison for all that time, and, yeah, you know, anything she said, you had to wonder if, you know, is there something else going on? Is she just using people? Is she making it seem like she's trustworthy and this whole thing? And with Sloan, he's, you know, he's free. He was pardoned. And, yeah, he, there's a... The, this idea of him being reformed... Obviously, they don't really trust him, or, you know, Sid and Jack don't really trust him. And so, certainly, you know, other CIA don't, but they do, you know, they kind of have to go along with it. And, yeah, it's, it's a... The... The, the relationship between him and Jack having worked together for decades and you know Jack has known for ages that SD6 wasn't part of the CIA so he has kind of you know he's been a double agent all that time where with Irina you know he hadn't dealt with her in a long time and Sid hadn't known Irina at all for all those years whereas Sid, you know, she was a double agent for two years working against him as well. And before that, she spent seven years trusting him. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say they, they did enough to make the two distinct. And, you know, supposedly the one thing that came out of the... Ildira, I think it was, was the word peace, and, you know, the, we we find out, although I really don't know how, who was supposed to have reported that there were all these yards of extra, what's it called, extra paper from the machine, I mean, certainly those working closely with Sloan would have known that he would not want that information out there. Sloan himself has no reason to really report it. You know, he says he discarded it. So it's not like someone could go and check. Yeah. It's it's convenient. It's like when Bomani, I want to say, you know, suddenly appears and disappears when, you know, when they're grabbing the what was it the keys to the the Rambaldi box? Maybe I don't I don't quite remember. But you know, diving, getting the and and you know, Bomani and Sid fight with, and he has the machete and yeah. Somehow he was right there, and then he completely disappeared. Just convenient, you know. But so yeah, so it's it's so that the audience can know that there's something else going on and. Then we do find out that it was the DNA code for the passenger, and 
you know, at first Jack seems to think that that's Irina, but yeah, then we learn that it is, in fact, Nadia, and the fact that Nadia even exists is revealed to us, and yeah, the, and, and, you know, the, the reason that Sloan used the Omnifam as a cover was to, you know, part of it was trying to find someone fitting that DNA, DNA code somewhere in the world, and yeah, it was, it was, it was a pretty clever kind of, you know, yeah, and, and the whole idea of him being reformed, you know, this, this idea of can, you know, of, of redemption, could, could he somehow pay the world back for all the, the awful things that he's done, and him as a double agent working for the Covenant, and then I love the little bit where first he, you know, he does his mind game with Sid, and, you know, and then she forces him to do, as she said, you know, the, when, when he's on a mission, and, you know, she says, we have to know what, I, I don't remember exactly what the information was, but, yeah, the, you know, she says, you have to ask him about that, and he clearly doesn't want to, and then she says, if you don't do it, I am going to cause feedback in the, you know, yeah, in, in the microphone in your ear. They'll hear that and they'll kill you on the spot. So, yeah. To, you know, and then she said, like, sucks being a double agent, doesn't it? You know, just, yeah. Love Sid's, you know, more snarky and just, yeah. She just, she doesn't take any crap. And what she wants, she wants. Also in the season opener was this guy, you know, accidentally stabbing himself in the in the stomach, and it's just the blade didn't break off at the buck at the you know buckle of the belt. Ben Carson, are you lying to us? Wow, something I really like about the season opener here, that where the season two opener really quickly resolves just about all the cool setups of the season one finale, this season opener starts us down the road to discover the truth, you know, that, you know, the season two finale tells us that she lost two years, and in this we see her trying to deal with coming back from that, and just, yeah, it's it's the kind of thing where when you have this really interesting setup like that it's more interesting to properly explore that than to just quickly resolve it and yeah I would say the the this season did a really good job of just yeah d delving into this thing of having lost all that time and trying to come back into yeah and, you know, the, the Covenant is like, you know, partially former KGB members and always on the, you know, always trying to find more Rambaldi. And, you know, Sid moves closer to the beach and becomes a neighbor of Weiss. And early in the season, you know, we, you know, we and she hangs out with him a lot. And it's a good kind of, you know, you need some, or the character needs to have some outside of work kind of life, you know, and yeah, it's it's interesting because the, the two of them can really talk, can really be comfortable talking about stuff related to work. She doesn't constantly have to watch what she says with that, and also have this kind of you know, Grunberg gets some more screen time. And... And we see Jack IMing with 
arena who's off screen and I think that was satisfactory for that kind of, you know in season two we see a lot of the relationship between the three Bristows and you know now having her off screen you know it wouldn't I think I I think there might be something about like she you know Lena Owen actually moved so yeah there was a kind of you know it was in you know in reality it was you know availability of the actor but I do think that it I I th I like it better than if they try to write her out completely somehow. But yeah, you know, it, it wouldn't stay interesting if it just, yeah, if, if you know, for, I, yeah, I'd say they, they did a really good job with, in, in season two, you know, we we have her some in custody, then we have her working with Sloane, and, you know, at the end she betrays Sloane, and, yeah, it's just, and the, you know, we of course have the, the fun, I am, you know, it's, these things are always written by people who don't know how the, you know, how this, kind of thing actually works in real life, you know, at, at first, you know, Jack never learns about the, about caps lock, you know, it's, he really has to, yeah, you know, that, you know, I think the last time they IM, he actually says, need help, and I, I figured it was, you know, how to find the caps lock, but whatever, and at first, like, hers is also read aloud, and, you know, and of course, hers shows up uh, one word at a time rather than all at once because it's more dramatic that way, you know, and then when she refuses to respond that last time, you know, and he tries to reconnect and, you know, user terminated, and then, like, I don't know, did she, like, send a virus his way, and, you know, the, the screen just becomes covered in, like, nonsense, like, you know, like code or something. I, did someone just watch The Matrix or something? Yeah, this is... And the... Yeah, we, we meet another of the Derevko sisters and see that she's also badass, and we find out that there are three Derevko you know, yeah, three Derevko women in total, and yeah, I, I really like that, you know, at first she seems to be helping them, but then, you know, she's actually, yeah, she she's working with the Covenant there at the end, and she only becomes tranked. I guess it would make a lot of sense if she was like in prison at least at the start of the next season or if there was some explanation for why she's not because she was tranked like real close to where Sid was it would have been really easy to prevent her from escaping it but yeah I, I don't know and I, I don't remember so I can't even spoil it even if I was inclined to and yeah, we, we see that Allison actually survived the season two finale, and, you know, in this season she can actually survive on, you know, with barely a pulse. She could easily get out of the, the situation, you know, it can't be backup because they would have been at the hotel, no, no, she did this, but just a pulse, she did this, you know, just, and then she dies in such a let, uh, again, Presuming she doesn't reappear, and I, yeah, I, I don't know, but it would appear that she dies here, you know. She's barely even in the episode where she dies, and then Will defeats her after a brief fight, whilst Sid once again fails to capture Sark. You know, he, yeah, he's often there when the CIA raid or attack or whatever, and almost always manages to escape. And the, you know, I, I love when he, 
you know, yeah, when, when first he tortures, you know, Vaughn, before the Inferno Protocol, when he uses the, the electrical thing, you know, and Vaughn is like, you know, holding that thing, you almost look like you've reached puberty. <laughs> and the, yeah, back to the, the Will episode, I, I gotta wonder, did Will Tippin write the script for that? Not Brandon... Not not Bradley Cooper, Will Tippin, because it's pure wish fulfillment. You know, he gets to be a badass, he gets to wield a gun, he gets he gets a disguise, he gets to go on a mission, he gets to have sex with Jen. I mean Sid, I mean Jen. Yeah. And Grun Grunberg gets a few aliases. Gotta love him meeting Ricky Gervais and the you know, the bits the exchange about, you know, weight, gain, weight loss, you know, and yeah, that whole thing with tricking him into thinking that, you know, Sid is Covenant, and yeah, that just in general is a great episode. And, you know, Carrie is still there now, you know, because it's been two years, you know, are, are you married too? Oh no no no! Oh, we're, we're gonna be, we're not even engaged. She she doesn't want it, but yeah. And and the you know yeah. At, before we just saw that they were you know kind of awkward together, and now they're together, and you know yeah. And uh, you know, gotta love the the Mitchell stuff. The you know. Him being so protective and you know paranoid about the kicks and the, uh, yeah, and I quite like how Lauren toys with Sark and he t toys with her some as well. But yeah, really love how Lauren is basically like an evil twin of the, you know of Sid. The, you know she's she's a double agent, she, deep undercover. And the, you know, she uses sex appeal to lower the guards of men. And, you know, similar to other strong, evil, you know, female characters, her sexuality is almost like a weapon. You know, she's seductive and sultry and sexual in all her attacks and movements, everything she does when it works out and when she's comfortable, you know, when Bomani puts pressure on her, less so, then she's, yeah. Now, the, Final thing on the death of Allison. I feel like she could basically have been cut out of the episode with very little lost. You know, you could just cut around mentions of her and yeah, you know, it's it's just there for him to get closure and catharsis and just yeah. The I, I somewhat said this earlier, but just to add more detail, at the end of the season, Vaughn is where Jack was decades ago, having been betrayed by a woman he loved and trusted, you know, with all of his heart, and yeah, as, um, again, I don't remember, so I'm, I'm really interested to see what they, you know, where they go from here with that. And the, you know, I love that they have more of, I'm just going to call them Kung Fu. I have to wonder if everyone who, you know, who meets him, greets him with a gun to the head, you know. But I do really like that, you know, with Sloane, it was like, you know, yeah, sure, let's, you know, we can, we can work together on this. You know, he, he's apparently even set him down the path. 
excuse me, decades ago, with excuse me, with Sark, he shows that he can excuse me, he can be quite badass, you know, grabs the gun, picks it apart enough that it's you know, he's not gonna be able to put it back together in order to use it and then, you know, fighting with the yeah, and and then you know, Lauren's mother shoots, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, good thing for the, the sick, you know, they needed him alive at least a little, so it was a good thing she, she had just a, you know, a, a trank gun in her hand there rather than another silenced handgun, because she's evidently quite trigger happy, you know, like, she had very little screen time before shooting people in, in that, yeah. And again, I mentioned the the disguises and aliases that might be insensitive to to you know ethnically and such. I don't know if the the stuff that Sid and Vaughn wear when they're in the desert is enough for that to qualify, but yeah, m maybe. And I have to wonder how anyone in the Alias universe stays hygienic because every time someone takes a bath, you know, the someone they trust or seems to trust goes through their stuff and realizes that, you know, they planned a bug or they realize that the person is actually working for someone they didn't think they were and such. I just... I would be constantly worried. I, I might, you know, just run the water for a while and then, you know, just quietly walk back and check if the other person was, was looking. Yeah. And we, you know, in, in the Mexico scenes and just, you know, Javier, I, you know, I've watched the rules of attraction so many times now. It's hard for me to look at, I don't quite remember the actor's name, but yeah, to, to look at him and see anyone but Rupert. So I, I kept expecting him to address someone as college boy or, you know, throw in a pop culture reference that the other person wouldn't get. You know, be real paranoid, do some coke, yeah. Offer coke, and then when the other person, you know, agrees to respond, then buy your own. Just, yeah. You gotta love some of the really out there sci-fi. In this, there's a, they, they, they can read brainwaves from orbit. That's so ridiculously out there. Yeah. The... In this week, and, you know, again, I'm, I'm trying to discuss how the show depicts torture. When Vaughn tortures suit and glasses, that's clearly, you know, the, yeah, he goes too far with it. The you know that that is pretty, yeah. With with the acid and yeah, and the I, I'm also just baffled by how little you know. He's not even remotely careful. But if if that's as you know as strong a concentration of acid as it appears. To, where are the rubber gloves? Where are, like, I'm not certain, but I want to say that the, the, the vapors from that are probably really bad. He should probably, yeah, there should probably be, like, a glass panel between him and the, and, like, yeah, it's just, it's pretty ridiculous. But it's, you know, for the sake of the scene, we, yeah, it's, it's easier that way. And when Vaughn is, you know, tortured by, by Sark, that's also, 
you know, yeah. So, you know, the, it's, it's bad to go that far, to be willing to do really, you know, horrible injury and to, yeah, you know, that's, that's something the bad guys do or that if you do it, you're going too far. You gotta love the when you know when when Lauren blows up the rotunda, you know, pretending to be Sid and just you know without the voice. So you know you can tell that there's something off. You know she's smiling. She's not, and and she keeps you know dropping things and you know and it's really clever with how you know they're they're pagers or she's throwing something in the garbage and you know that first one it's just like a, a you know an empty cup of coffee why would they think twice about it you know and yeah and and then Marshall comes in why are you downloading the you know at, at first it's like you know, we can tell that there's some kind of danger, and, you know, we're like, okay, phew, he went, oh, no, he, you know, why downloading the, the DNA profile, and then she shoots him, and just, isn't that, like, the last time we see him in the episode, too? I mean, Vaughn, he got scenes after he recovered, and he was only injured, you know, in a later scene than that, anyway, and I do also think it was a little... A little bit boring that Sid was detained for like I don't know ten minutes of the episode or something, you know. As just yeah, but but yeah, you know she plants all those and then you know activate countermeasures and she walks out and actually when when we see Marshall in there we might just have heard her speak as Lauren to yeah. But, yeah, and, and she runs out and is, you know, Sid, wait, and then he runs up and then she hits him, so she did wait. And it's, it's the, they, they go full Mission Impossible briefly there. You know, they have these perfect, you know, face masks that just, you know, yeah, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. And it's also just kind of a cheat because it's the first time in the show that we see someone have masks like that and suddenly Lauren has one of Sid and Sid has one of Lauren and Sid of course also gets a, you know the the voice modulator and it's just you know you you can tell I, I figured out that you know I, I didn't I didn't remember and I think I also figured it out the first on the first viewing you know Lauren didn't actually release Vaughn after the Inferno Protocol. That was them not having done it. This was a test, you know, and, and Dixon on the phone, oh, hey, here, use my phone. And the, yeah, the, the, the truck transporting BJs, you know, it's, and, and the, the thing, you know, it, it, it blows. And then, you know, and, and Dixon is like, get get me the the footage surrounding it and send out another truck of bjs but yeah you know and and lauren in the cell also just supposed to get information out and sark falls for it and you know she grabs him and you know and yeah really very nicely done and yeah And final thing about the opener, apparently Vaughn was supposed to have known that Sid was still out there, that, you know, and just, yeah, and, and she chews him out for, for that, but she does go on to say, I am horrible, so she does realize that, and yeah, now, I wish everyone a you know happy holidays and you know under be below the video if, if you could just put a put a finger down there maybe maybe a couple of fingers and just stick a thumb up I'd, I'd really appreciate it 
I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.